Hey, it's Greg from Scholar Farms. We're here at the Mima Mounds in Washington, south of Olympia, and we're going to do a little bit of mapping today. We're gonna to have the Mavic, and we're gonna do some live mapping with the new live map from Drone Deploy. We're gonna do some 360s from Hangar, and then we're gonna do some mapping in 2D and 3D that we'll process later in Pix4D. And so we're gonna test out, put it through the paces, and look at this weird vegetation patterns that are out here. Nobody really knows why these mounds were created. So some folks think it's from glacial glacial recession, so the glaciers moving back and, and they left these deposits here. Other folks think it was gophers that created these giant mounds. Nobody really knows, it's still a mystery, but what's interesting is the plants growing on the mounds are different than the plants growing off the mounds. And so when we're interested in mapping plants with drones, we should be able to see that from 100 foot or 200 foot. Uh, and so we'll look at the data and I'm excited to see what the results are and we'll, I'll share it with you in just a bit. So we'll see you soon. So we just got back from the Mima Mounds and we're gonna walk through some of the results. We'll look through three different things. Let's look through the live map from Drone Deploy. I think that was super cool to see out in the field it being built in real time. Then we'll look at the 360 pano from Hangar and what the, how that turned out. And then we'll go into the Pix4D cloud and we'll look at some of the new cloud features, the new 3D point cloud features that they've recently updated within their cloud. So we're just dealing with the cloud today and looking at some new tools. And so I'm gonna turn it over to the computer and we'll look at the screencast and we'll walk through each one. Okay, so here I am logged into my Drone Deploy account. You can see the Mima Mounds natural history area here, and we can see the live map then down here at the bottom. So I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit to look at that live map. And this map was created in real time when I was mapping with the at Mavic and using an iPhone 6S, and I was mapping at about 250 feet or so above the ground, you need to fly a little bit higher for this to work, and it is a lower resolution map than what I would get if I submitted all the photos and processed, but you can see it's actually pretty good. I'll zoom in a little bit more, and I can pick up a lot of the variation out in the field. So I can see here uh, some grasses that are greening up. I can see a lot of the lichen that grows on one side of the mountains based on slope or, or so, or aspect. Uh, of the mound, so you can really see the patterns out there. I can see some of the trails uh, and where people have walked out there. And so I'm pretty impressed actually with this live map feature. I think it's a really useful tool for quick and, quick and dirty scouting out in the field. Uh, I can also switch over and look at some plant health estimates. And these are just using the RGB. It wasn't using a multi-spectral camera. And, and it doesn't really make sense here uh, in terms of thinking about health of natural vegetation. This would be more for ag. But I can pick up some of the differences in the mounds and some of the greenness factors that are out there. I can play around a little bit with it. And so there are some just basic tools here. I can change some of these indices and in, in visualizations. Again, it is just a RGB uh, manipulation, but I think it is useful to kind of look and pick, see if you can pick out some of the patterns, and I can pick out some of the mounds, but for, for the most part, I want to look at that color map here. And then the nice thing is I can go up here and I can share it, and I can get a link, and I'll provide that link as well so that uh, folks can look directly at this map or I can export it. And so I think this is a really useful feature. Uh, I'm really excited about playing with it more, particularly in an ag setting where I might be doing field scouting uh, or if I wanna provide data layers very quickly to people and I just wanna get it in the live view, create a quick map or I'm out doing a demo with someone, I can share that data automatically. So great job guys, I'm excited to play around with this some more out in the field. Next, let's move on to Hangar to their 360 view. So this is 25 photos or so processed and I collected all the photos and I transferred them from the drone to my phone and then I waited till I got to a Starbucks for internet and then uploaded those to the cloud, but they were ready within 15 minutes or so after I uploaded them. I just didn't want to use the data on my phone or I could have done it out in the field. The nice thing about this hangar pano is that it processes automatically for you and it's just really great. You can zoom in and you can see all the detail. Uh, I think it's really easy to 
uh, interact with. I can, and the mobile is really great too. If you if you have this link and you share it, uh, you can just move the phone around and really look at it. I can also go into my editor within Hanger and I can do a couple of really interesting things. So first it shows you here on this map up here in the upper left, I can see the actual location where the 360 was taken. And the other nice thing about it is that I can take snapshots of different views. And so if I just want the individual view, or let's say I wanna do a quick survey and I wanted to do a transect of the mounds that were near me, then I could just click this little snapshot button and it would take a picture and I would download that picture. And so I can also share this link. And so this link that's up here, I can share that with anyone and I'll post that as well. So you can take a look at it and you can interact with it. So I really like these 360 panos. I think they're really easy to take. It's a one button push within the app. I think you can pick up a lot of the visualizations from these mounds and, and the differences on and off the mound. And so I think it's just a nice way, again, for quick kind of scouting of an area. If you were using it for ag or forestry or ecological applications, these point surveys are actually super useful. And I think the Hangar team has done a good job and continues to improve on their platform. Let's move over to Pix4D. In Pix4D, this is cloud.pix4d.com. This is the cloud option for processing compared to the desktop option that you may be familiar with. You get both options with your Pix4D account. And here you can see all of the photos that I have uploaded. There's 266 photos. And this is the obvious way to look at individual data is just look at the individual photos. And so I, I will just encourage you to look through and use those individual photos before you start also looking at process them, processing them into maps. But let's go ahead and look at the map. So I clicked on this tab up here that will give you me my map view and then I can just zoom in on my map. And this is similar to what you saw in drone deploy under the live map feature, only this is a much higher resolution. So we can continue to zoom in and you can get down to those individual mounds and really see the differences and the patterns on those mounds. It's actually pretty striking how different the grasses are on the mound versus off the mound. And there's been loads of field ecology classes and college students out there traipsing around these mounds over the decades doing measurements and doing their independent projects and their studies. One of the interesting things here in the 2D is that we can also look at the digital surface model. So we can look at that kind of terrain model. So I'll go ahead and turn that on. And it's pretty striking the differences of these mounds. And it really begs the question of what made these mounds? Was it just glacial deposits? Was it rodents? Was it wind? And the DSM really shows the variation in the size of the different mounds, and you could export these data layers, obviously, to a GIS software, and you could get very precise measurements of the mounds, but you can also click up here and get distance of a mound, for example, across. So you can see they're pretty big. Before I look at the ortho, I'll just change this over to the satellite view so we can see the actual mounds here on the satellite view. And you can see, again, comparing the much higher resolution of the drone map to the satellite view, especially if we zoom in here, you can really see. But it does a great job on lining it up here. So that's the 2D. Let's go ahead and look at the 3D. We just click here on this 3D model tab. And this is where there's been a lot of improvement in the past couple of weeks and months in the Pix4D cloud is this 3D perspective. And the newest feature is the ability here to look at the 3D points, and I can spin this around, and I can zoom in. And under the tools here, you can change the size of the points, as well as how many points you want to visualize. So if you want to visualize fewer points, but you want them to be bigger, that's certainly possible now, and that wasn't before. I can also change the background color if I want to, but I like that black background. Then I can still overlay the 3D texture mesh, and so um, that was previously what you could do in the cloud is just get that mesh view. You can still do that. It makes it a bit more, more photorealistic and I can zoom in a little bit, but you do lose some of the details of the plants. Now I wouldn't use the point cloud for identifying plants because you lose some of that composition. But one of the interesting tools is you can click on this inspect tool and I can click on individual mounds and then I can pull the sidebar out and I can look actually at the individual photos that I just clicked on. So this is the point and here are all the photos that make up this set of points. And then I can go back to those original photos that are right there 
and say and look at the differences in the species composition for example I can also pin the image or I can drop a little pin and an annotation and annotate it so that's actually a really nice feature is to look at this 3d view and interact with it but then go back to the 2d side by side and be able to look in more detail and inspect in more detail of who are those species that are driving that pattern or is it a weed or is it uh, some sort of infestation if you're looking at ag fields etc so nice interaction there I think they've done a good job in improving it one nice feature would be to still measure the volumes here it would be cool if we could measure the volumes of the individual mounds and we could do that in the desktop software or exporting to a CAD software but we can't do it yet in the cloud just a couple of things to wrap up here I can share this link and I'll share it with you uh, so this is a public token so that you can view the 2D and the 3D. And then under download, I would have the options to download all the files. So I could download the ortho, the DSM, if I wanted to see those the surface model of all those mounds, and the point cloud as well as the mesh if I wanted it. So lots of features there within the cloud. So great job, Pix4D, on working on the 3D version of the cloud. And I'm excited to see what you have uh, in the future. All right, so that's the MEMA mounds. You can check them out if you're cruising up from the I-5 corridor from Portland, Oregon to Seattle, Washington, or vice versa. You can pull over and it's an open natural area that you can go hike around. Don't fly your drone unless you have a permit though, like we did from the Department of Natural Resources. If you're interested in those tools, you can go to Drone Deploy, you can go to Hangar, you can go to Pix4D, you can check them out for yourself. You can also go to scholarfarms.com and we have a whole masterclass on how to map plants with drones. We'll walk you through step by step the foundations, all the tools, how to use color cameras, how to use multi-spectral cameras. Check it out. We also have a free course called the Quick Start Guide to Plants and Drones that'll give you a, a broad overview of the drone industry and where plants fit in. My name's Greg, I'm the founder of Scholar Farms and we'll talk to you again soon.